Thanks to Blazing Boost for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are struggling to get anything Destiny 2 content related, this is the place to be. They offer a Sherpa service so your account is safe and they will run you through activities to get you that gear you do want. Also, they do have a 5 star trust pilot with over 28,000 reviews. So if that doesn't say they're trustworthy, I don't know what does. Not only that, if you use code UNSTOPPABLE, it will help me so much. And not only that, you will get a 5% discount on all items. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you the best PvP Hunter build. Now with the brand new competitive system, you guys are going to be wanting a lot of PvP builds this season to help get you to that top rank. Now currently I played 7 matches, we did win all the matches and I was using this build. Not only that, we do now have the Rose Hand Cannon and we did get placed the highest you can actually get placed out of the placements for the first season which was gold free. So we head on over to the competitive. This is what I used for this build. As you can see, we are in the gold division three. Now, obviously there are higher ranks, but from them seven games where you start, the highest you can possibly get is gold free. So we did manage to get that with this build. But if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, drop a like on today's video, because there's going to be a lot more videos coming with the brand new season. But with that said, let's jump straight into the build. So the build we are running is Night Stoker and we are using Spectral Blades. To be honest, probably one of the best supers, plus you can go invisible rather than the Tether. Now the Tether can be quite handy, but for most players, and even myself, I do prefer the Spectral Blades. Because you can get a few more kills with it. Then we do have Gambler's Dodge, Triple Jump, but totally your preference which one you pick. With the Snare Bomb and vortex grenade now you can use a lot of grenades some people like to use void spikes try them all out and sort of pick which one you guys do want to use then we are using a vanishing step so that when we do dodge we are invisible then we do have a trapper's ambush so that we can obviously make ourselves and nearby allies invisible with the smoke bomb then for the fragments we're using echo of exchange echo of remnants and echo of leeching now, I just want to say as well before I go into the guns and that if you go over to the artifact, as you can see right here, there is one that does have hand cannon targeting and we are going to pick that up right now. Now, this is a super handy to perk to have. I usually use the normal one, but with this season it being one to use, we'll be able to use a few of these. So, as you can see, we're using the rows. Now, I haven't actually used this yet. I've literally just unlocked it from doing the placements. The fell winter's still... Even though it has had a lot of nerfs, me personally still think it's the best shotgun. And then the Galahorn. Now, one thing I want to say, light level does not matter in the competitive, so you can use anything you want. I have been using the Spare Rations Revoker, and to be honest, it is a good roll. But, if you're a sniper, you can use anything you want. The guns do not really affect the build, and I'll show you how you can change it if you guys are a sniper. Now, stats-wise, what you're going to want to be looking for is 100 mobility, 100 recov, and 100 intellect, if you guys can get them. Now, the build I do have is okay. It's not great, and to be honest, I really do need to improve it. But they're the stats you want to aim for. Now, moving on to the helmet, what we do have is a mobility mod with hand cannon targeting. However, we have just picked that up, so if we swap that, we'll be able to use, obviously, a higher mobility mod. And I believe you can stack these as well if you guys want to. However, if you guys use in-flight compensator as well, you're going to be getting more airborne effectiveness. So I'm going to keep that on because it is a really not good perk from this season's artifact. So make sure you do have that on. Moving on to the arms, what we do have is a recovery mod with a hand cannon dexterity. Now for the chest piece, what we do have is the dragon shadow. Me personally... I've always said that the Dragon Shadow is the best exotic for the Hunter because when you dodge, it reloads all your weapons. You get a movement speed increase and weapon handling speeds do increase for a short time. Now, we have paired that with Recovery Mod, Melee Damage Resistance and Unflinching Hand Cannon Aim so that we don't really get flinched off our opponent when we are getting shot at. Now, this one right here, to be honest, is not a lot of perks 
you guys can use so i would recommend using that extra five mobility that you can put on from this sort of artifact right there if you guys need to really handy perk to have and then we do have just invigoration and radiant light for that plus 20 strength just to increase it now moving on to the cloak we're running a mobility mod with outreach and powerful friends so that we do get that plus 20 mobility so as you can see we've got 90 mobility 90 recov 74 strength and 50 so it's not a bad build that is pretty much the full build though guys all you have to do is simply go invisible dodge use your smoke bomb nearby allies it's so overpowered when your enemies don't know where you are on the radar for flanking and that is pretty much how we won seven out of seven of our matches but with that said hopefully you guys did enjoy today's build like i said there'll be a lot more coming in the future this one was a short one straight to the point but let's try and aim for 40k subs hopefully at the start of this year and as always i will catch you in the next one